Joey Duca with CSC Motorcycles. Now you can't stop and smell the roses if you can't stop. We all know why we need brakes. We need to stop. The ability to stop as soon as possible can even be life-saving. So inspecting and maintaining your brakes is very important. But what are brakes and how do they work? The first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred or changed from one form to another. Your brakes on your motorcycle do just that. They transfer kinetic energy into heat through friction. Now your brakes ability to handle this heat greatly affects how well they work. There are two different ways the brakes are actuated. Mechanical, which are mainly used on older style drum brakes and hydraulic brakes, which we're gonna cover in this video. The hydraulic brake system consists of the master cylinder, brake line, and the caliper. The master cylinder is a pump and uses brake fluid to create hydraulic brake pressure. The brake line transfers this pressure to the caliper. The pistons in the caliper push friction brake pads against the rotors. This friction stops your motorcycle, and this friction also creates heat. All the components in the system, for example, the holes or slots in the rotor, are specifically designed to handle and dissipate this heat. This will be a multiple video series covering everything brakes. In this first video, we will specifically be covering brake pads and their replacement. Brakes are the most critical system on your motorcycle. Without the ability to stop, you will crash, cause property damage, possible bodily injuries, or even death. If you're not able to perform any of these steps, please take your motorcycle to a qualified motorcycle technician. CSC is not responsible for damage or bodily harm caused by improper installation and or adjustment. This video is only to provide you with tips and insight. Five millimeter Allen wrench. Six millimeter ball end Allen wrench. Eight and 16 millimeter wrench. 12 millimeter socket and ratchet, torque wrench, large flat screwdriver, blue Loctite, brake cleaner, Scotch Bright, clean shop rags, nitro gloves, and safety goggles, brake bleeder, front pad replacement. Now, brakes get very hot, so before you start, Make sure the brake components are cool to the touch. To help deal with the brake dust, it is recommended you start by cleaning the calipers, rotors, and wheels with a water-based degreaser like Simple Green with brushes and water. Do not use compressed air on parts containing brake dust. <coughs> we will be using the SG250 for this demonstration. I really like that it has a center stand. When to replace your brake pads. Your brake pads compose of a steel backing plate on one side and friction material on the other. The friction material is what's rubbing against your rotors and is made of, of a composite material blended with some form of metal like steel or copper. High performance pads have a higher concentration of metal to handle the higher heat. We will touch on this later in the video. As you use your brakes, the friction material on the pad wears thin. When the friction material measures less than 1.5 millimeters, it is time to replace your pads. 
This is roughly the thickness of a quarter. Some brake pads have a slit cut into the pad. Now this wear indicator gives you a visual reference on when it's time to replace them. Now, whether you have indicators or not, brake pads do not wear evenly. You might have friction material on one end of the pad, but not the other. It is wise to check both sides of the pads on all the calipers. If you start hearing a grinding noise when you engage the brakes, you are not getting full braking capability and you are damaging the rotor. Unlike automotive rotors, motorcycle rotors cannot be resurfaced. If they are damaged, they have to be replaced. Replacing the brake pads. Using a five millimeter Allen wrench, remove the piston pin caps and only crack loose the brake pad retaining pins. Do not remove them just yet. Using a 12 millimeter socket, remove the two caliper mounting bolts. Carefully slide the caliper off the rotor. When the caliper is off the rotor, do not engage the front brake lever. Using brake parts cleaner, clean the exposed parts of the piston for inspection. If needed, use a toothbrush along with the brake parts cleaner. This will help prevent damaging the caliper seal when we push back the pistons. Believe it or not, the caliper seal is what pulls back the piston when you release the brake. Hydraulic pressure deforms the square caliper seal when the piston goes out. When the brake is released, the seals return back to being square and pull back the piston. Inspect the pistons. If there's evidence of rust or other damage to the surface, replace the caliper. Using a clean, large, flat screwdriver, evenly pry apart the thin, worn pads to push the pistons back to make room for the new, thicker brake pads. If the pistons refuse to push back into the calipers, verify that even pressure is being applied. Also, verify the pistons are not hydrolocking from too much fluid being in the reservoir. If you added brake fluid between pad replacements, it is probably hydrolocking. It will be necessary to bleed off excessive fluid through the bleed nipple with an attached hose into a clean container or bleeder tool. More on this is covered in our brake bleeding video. Check the link in the description. Remove the retaining pins. To aid in removing the pins, push down on the pads to overcome the anti-rattle spring tension. Replace the caliper pins if they show wear. Worn caliper pins cause the brake pads to become sticky and not fully return when you release the brake. If you need replacement pins, check the link in the description. Assembling brake pads onto caliper. Brake pads can easily be installed backwards. So orient yourself with the brake pads. When installing, Verify the friction material is positioned inboard toward the rotors. The anti-rattle spring is a leaf spring in the caliper. And not only does it prevent the brake pads from rattling, it also provides a smooth glide surface for the pads to move on. And it also keeps the opposing pad in position. Clean and verify the spring is completely installed.
First, install the piston side pads flush against the pistons. Push the pad down against the spring tension to align the brake pad holes to the caliper pin holes. Push the pin three quarters of the way through the caliper, leaving room for the opposing brake pad. The rattle spring does not allow full insertion of the pins without the brake pad. Apply a drop of blue Loctite on the threads of the retaining pins. With the pin holes facing inward, place the opposing brake pad flush against the back of the caliper. Again, verify the friction material is positioned inboard toward the rotor and verify the pad is locked in place inside the retaining tabs. Push down the brake pad against spring tension as you completely insert the retaining pins with a five millimeter Allen. You will torque the pins after you install the caliper to assist with leverage but do not forget this critical step. Apply one drop of blue Loctite on the caliper mounting bolts. Position the caliper over the rotor. and using a 12 millimeter socket, install the mounting bolts and torque the 21 foot pounds. Now, torque the retaining pins to 13 foot pounds and snugly replace the pin caps. Pump the master cylinder to push out the pistons until firm pressure is felt. Scuffing up your rotors with a Scotch-Brite pad will help with braking. Using brake parts cleaner and a clean rag, completely clean the rotor. Please note that these steps are basically the same across all our motorcycles, except for the rear on the SG250. The SG250 in 2018 came with mechanical drum brakes, and on 2019 and later models, removing the right rear shock is required to access the caliper mounting bolts. A 16 millimeter wrench is required to remove and replace the rear shock. A ball end six millimeter Allen is recommended to remove and replace the caliper mounting bolts. Apply blue Loctite and torque the caliper mounting bolts to 21 foot pounds. Now, in our experience, the rear shock cap nuts on the SG250 are easily stripped. Apply blue Loctite and hand tighten only. Breaking in pads. Start with slow stops at 15 miles an hour, increasing 10 miles an hour each time up to 45, and coming back down to 15 miles per hour. Repeat these steps two to three times and resume casual riding. Avoid hard braking and coming to a complete stop if possible. Bedding in brake pads helps prevent glazing and helps to mate the pads to the rotor surface. 
Stopping performance will improve gradually over the next 100 miles. Tires. Your wheels, tires, and brakes work together to get you stopped. The brake slows your wheels, and it's your tires that actually stop your motorcycle. Frequently check the condition and inflation of your wheels and tires. For more on this, watch our video on wheels and tires. Check the link in the description below. What causes brake noise and fade? When brake pads overheat, the pad material hardens and becomes shiny, resulting in less bite and more noise. Just like how bread turns to burnt toast. Perfect. At that point, replacing your pads is the best option. Now, if this is happening to you, upgrading to a high heat brake pad compound is the best solution. Now, the downside is accelerated wear. We do have performance high heat compounds available. Please check the link in the description. Now, 90% of your stopping power of your motorcycle comes from your front brake. If you're experiencing excessive rear brake wear compared to your front, for your safety, you might want to reevaluate your braking habits. Now, we all know brakes are very important and critical. So if you're not equipped to perform any of these steps, please take your motorcycle to a qualified motorcycle technician. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Now stay tuned for our next video in our brake series. And thanks for watching guys and ride safe.